Hi everyone, Garrett Brown here. In this video, we're going to show you how you can create your own Kami documents. Uh, there's a Google Doc next to this on the website where you can, uh, where I'll give you a chance to create your own and you can edit your own Kami document, create it. If you want to upload it there, you can share where uh, what you've learned through Kami and uh, we can create our own little collaboration hub for exploring Kami in different ways. So let's get started. Now I'm going to start right here by clicking this button, get started. It might have you sign in, it might have uh, you create an account, but that's a good way to start. Um, and it will me, it's already going to sign me in. I have a Google account, it's already set up. It remembers my password and all that stuff. I gave it, you know, I agreed to letting it use my Google. So I highly recommend that you get a Google account with this because it just syncs up so great. Uh, as you can see, we have a couple different options. We have our OCR, um, split and merge, open from Google Drive, open from the computer, create a Google Classroom assignment, and new blank page. Um, OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition, and that's where we're going to start today. We're going to start this way, and um, I'm going to jump around a little bit while we're working with this. Let's open that up. Um, it's really simple. We just want to add a file, or you can add from Google Drive. I'm going to add a file, and Optical Character Recognition takes a text that was scanned as a document and turns it into a readable, searchable text file. Uh, so if you find a great article that you have a print copy of or you want a chapter from a book and you need to share it to your class uh, with a digital format, this is a great way to do this. So here's my non-searchable text. Uh, I just click next. Once, oh, here's what it looks like. I can't click on anything. It won't let me highlight anything because it's non-searchable. I can't control find anything on here. It's just one small page. Um, I'm sure you can get better examples for yourselves. You have your own. Uh, scan copies of documents. I upload it. I hit next. It takes a little bit. This is a pretty small document. If it's a longer file, more time. So make sure you budget for that when you're lesson planning. And great. Uh, we can export it to Google Drive or Kami. I'm going to export it to Kami because that's what we're working on. You can also just download it and I can open it. Once it's downloaded, all the features of Kami become available. You can see I can highlight text. I can control find. Uh, text. I can um, just do all those things that I love to do with Kami. Even text to speech works. Uh, so that's really awesome how that still works. It's a cool tool to use. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, let's keep going and go back to our next topic, which is split and merge. Let's say you want you have a um, a PDF. And I want to, mm, I don't want to give both these pro, or all, both these pages to my group. They only need one, so I can split it. I can drag it and drop it. If you have multiple pages, I mean, sometimes you're working on, in John Jigsaws for reading. You can easily split the pages up that way. Um, if you go to merge mode, I can add another file in there. And it's not going to matter. Uh, so let's say I have this file in there. Great, now I have two files, I can merge them together and they can become one. But this one has the answers on it, I don't want to merge it together. I can get rid of this one with the answers on it. Now, here's they have some practice with area, here's some area problems, and here are and here's another problem to an extension problem. So if I wanted to, I could even differentiate it further and say, okay, I want this, and then I can split it once and then no, I want this one and to be by itself. So it's a great tool to use. Uh, and you can export it here when you're done. So if we go back to the main app now. Um, opening from Google Drive, it's pretty similar to opening from a file. I can just pick um, any file. Let's go to math. Um, here's a project my students work on, how will you survive? It needs to be converted to Kami, so I will. I haven't picked it yet. I want to show you how that works. So. If it needs to be converted, Kami will convert it for you and prompt you. And already, it asked me if I want to run OCR. Let me move myself. And I can hit yes or no. No big deal. I can hit run OCR. Um, I can hit no. I'm just going to hit uh, no for right now. My students don't need to be able to do anything with this. 
So it's a great way for them to, um, this is a little project we do about uh, getting bills and finding a house and all that stuff, having a job. So they really like this project. So um, you can insert your boxes or anything else. Students can comment on each other. They can do text boxes, same stuff as the earlier video. And that's just a quick way to insert it from Google Drive. Um, I can go back, open from the computer. Same thing. We did it before. We just click and open. And oh, I have a copy of this already. So I can create a new copy. It really doesn't matter. And there it is. And this one's already readable, so it's really nice. Students are able to access it. Um, one way you can differentiate instruction in math is this one's about tape diagrams. So for some students, you can put those tape diagrams in there already for them so that they're ready to go. And they understand, oh, these are my parts I have. I just need to fill in my numbers. And it's a way to support their knowledge and their own independent learning without singling them out as much as, per se, calling them to a small group or saying, you, you, and you, um, you know, you guys can work on problems one while everyone else goes one through three, stuff like that. It's a really good way to support your students. Well, we can go back now. Oh, I need to sign in again. Uh, creating Google Classroom assignments, I'm going to do last. New page, I'm going to start over first. Uh, I love the blank pages. You can do blank page, lined page, a grid page. If you're working on math or you need a grid, a music sheet even. So if you want, if you're working in uh, a band class, you want students to compose their own music, you can have them edit it there. Uh, I can have a blank page. You can edit it, the name right here. I can call it uh, Team Brainstorm 1. And you can even add some shapes in there to support your students' uh, brainstorms. Like here's a thought bubble. Here's some bubbles that go on there. Uh, I can draw some lines in there. I know this kind of. I can zoom out if I want to. Like, oh man, it's kind of hard to see all that. I can zoom out, give myself some more space. I really like the hand tool when it comes to moving drawings around. It just makes it so much easier than trying to grab it with the circle tool. Because sometimes you'll make a lot of little circles too, and then it gets a little obnoxious. So that's. Um, one way to use the blank page. I'm going to go back. There we go. And the last one we're going to talk about is the Create Google Classroom Assignment. So right now, if you haven't done so yet, I want you to pause this video and find an assignment that a PDF assignment or a scan document, because we know how to use the OCR, uh, that you would like to use in your classroom. Have it ready, saved in a folder, so you're um, set to go. So pause this video, find that, and then when you're ready, we can walk through together on how to create a Google Classroom assignment. I hope you are back and you have a good document you're ready to use that you want your students and yourself to start exploring Canby with. So we're going to click on Create a Google Classroom Assignment. Um, you can edit all the things, how many points it's worth. Let's say I want this to be worth 50 points. I can give it a due date I want to do on next Friday uh, at, oops, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, let's do that. It's, I'm going to schedule it so it comes on there. I think on Monday at, let's make it at 9 in the morning so it's all ready to go. Or if I don't want any of that, I can just have it come whenever. Uh, if you have different topics in your Google Classroom, it will let you add a topic. I don't have any in this Google Classroom I'm using because I haven't selected one yet. So um, I'm going to first select, I'm going to upload this my professional development one so you can see it still. Um, but this is going to, I'm just going to uh, do my seventh period math class. And you can see it goes all students. I can choose which students I want to send stuff to. They can do a published or draft version. Uh, I can do it to all students. So it's a great way right there to differentiate instruction. If I made uh, two different Cami documents, one with modifications and supports, one without, right there. That's your that's your different instruction. That's how you can use this program really easily. That math example earlier with the um, tape diagrams already put out there could really help uh, with those kind of uh, projects. So I'm going to title this uh, Cami Example 1. I can put instructions, um, create a Cami document. Now I can upload from Google Drive or my file, just as before. I'm going to upload my Cami example three. 
you can make a copy for each student, make one shared copy, or you can make a students cannot edit. Depending on what you're doing, if you're working in teams, you can make one shared copy and just share it to select students. If you want everyone to work individually, make a copy for each student is probably your best bet. So I'm going to make a copy for each student. Um, and it takes a minute to, to load. Once it's done, I can open it in my classroom. And it might take a minute to open. And then we can go to our Google Classroom, and there it is. Here's our Cami example one, new assignment. And it will say via Cami. Um, here's the student work. When the students open it on their computer, their Google Form app's a little different. Uh, they just click on the document they're going to open. And up here, this is the key. They have to click Open with Cami. Otherwise, it will look like this. And you'll get a lot of raised hands in the air. It's not opening. I don't know how to do it. So make sure you review with them beforehand open with Cami. And from there you're set. The document uploads just how you wanted it. Um, it works just the way we talked about before. Uh, you can go in there and you can grade it. You can open it as um, when you get student work. You can open them. You can comment on it. It's a live document. Multiple people can access it at once. You can create different uh, levels for your students to help differentiate their instruction, support those students with the dictionary and the voice to text and like video comments. It is such a great tool. And um, it's, I've used it all the time in my class and I teach math and I didn't think I would use it as much, but I always give kids the option. Hey, if you want to use Cami, you can use Cami. And sometimes kids use it and sometimes they don't. But the fact that it's there offers them that extra level of safety and support that could really help them. All right, that's it for my video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Have a great one.